Hi everyone, welcome back to another fun-filled lesson and information-packed lesson of Tandy Poi Actual Speaking. I am Jennifer Clyde. It is time for lesson 39, and today's topic is emergencies, or emergency situations where you actually have to call someone for help. Perhaps you may call the police for help. Now, of course, you can be ready for anything. We all can be ready for anything, such as natural disasters. In the past, there have been disasters such as earthquakes, cyclones, floods, even tsunamis uh, because of severe weather changes. And we have also experienced chemical plant exposure, uh, explosions in recent days. Now, of course, these emergency situations don't always have to be a disaster. They can range from the merely inconvenient to life-threatening. So, what kind of emergency situations have you experienced in the past? Today, we'll take a look at some vocab terms and expressions you can use, especially when talking about having to call the police in a certain emergency situation, and on and on. So are you ready? Let's begin then. Now, here we are, ready to begin today's lesson on emergencies or emergency situations. You know, sometimes a bit of information and preparation can really make a big difference. Today, we'll slightly focus on less severe emergency situations, such as robberies and burglaries. So, are you ready? Let's begin by warming up with our five W's and how questions. As always, let's begin with the first W question, which happens to be who question. Now, who is the first person you would call in any kind of emergency? So, say, for example, there is an emergency situation. Who is the first person you would call for help, okay? So, think about that, and let's move on to the next who question. Now, in the past, who did you call in an emergency situation? So, first of all, the first question is, who would you call if there happens to be an emergency? And if something happened in the past, if you experienced an emergency situation, who did you call, all right? And another one, who was involved? Who was involved in an accident, in a robbery, and so forth and so on? And one more who question is, was anyone hurt? Was anybody hurt in the emergency situation? So think about these questions. Now we are brainstorming. These questions will help you talk about today's topic. Let's move on to our what question. Now, what kind of emergency situations have you been in? So when we say emergency, these are urgent situations, perhaps dangerous situations, where you need help from others, perhaps the police, right? Okay, another W question is, what happened? Now, of course, we've asked you who you would call, who you called in the past, and what kinds of emergency situations you were involved in. Now, of course, you have to give details. So, of course, talk about what exactly happened. Moving on to our next what question. What did you do to resolve the situation? How was the situation solved? How did you resolve it? Did somebody else come to help you? Okay, so think about that question as well. And another one, in what kinds of emergency situations have you helped people? So this time we're talking about you helping others in an emergency situation, okay? Now, of course, let's move on to our when question. Now, talk about when it happened. When did it happen? Ask yourself this question. And when did you help someone in an emergency situation? So talk about an emergency situation that happened to you, when it happened, and also about the time that you helped someone get out of an emergency situation, all right? Moving on to where. Where did it happen and where were you? So this question is asking you two things. Where it happened, perhaps the location, the place, the area, and also where you were. Were you at the crime scene? Were you at the scene of the accident and so forth? Or were you far away? So think about this question as well. And moving on to our why question. Now, why did you call the police? Perhaps there were many, many times where you had to call the police for help. It could have been a motor vehicle accident. It could have been because of a fire. It could have been because uh, there was a violent fight somewhere. So think about why you called the police in the past. And of course, help. Talk about how serious the situation was. Now, if it were to be a fire, you could say it was a small fire, so it was not that serious. But if it was a huge fire, it would of course be a very serious emergency situation, right? Okay, and our next how is how much damage was done? Also mention something about damage, okay? The damage, and also how long did it take for help to arrive? So say, for example, you had to call an ambulance, or you had to call your insurance company, or perhaps the police. How long did it take for them to arrive, for them to come, okay? Let's move on to, now, how was the situation resolved? Once again, talk about how it was resolved, okay? Now, what did you do to resolve the situation? And also, how was the situation resolved is another question you can ask yourself to help you freely talk about this topic. So these are our brainstorming cues, everyone. Ask yourself your own brainstorming cues with the five W's and eight questions. All right, then, let's move on. You know, Peter, I've been watching the news lately, yeah. and there's been a surge in theft, like at jewelry stores and cell phone stores. Really? Yeah. Those must be professional thieves. They don't look professional because they have CCTV. <laughs> oh, really? No, they just look like regular laymen. They're not even disguised. They just kind of run in, grab everything, and come out. But uh, thankfully, I've never had to encounter anything with robbery. So you never had to call 911 or anything? You know, luckily, I've never had to call 911. Mm. Sounds like you have, though? Sure, yeah. Oh. I, uh, many years ago, my house was robbed in Korea. Oh my goodness. On Chuseok, of all days. Were I was, you home at the time? No, uh, the cops said I was really lucky that I was out because they might have, you know, hurt me if they, they found me in there. That's true. Um, but I was at the uh, PC bank, oh. <laughs> emailing friends. Okay. This was before people had the internet at home very much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I came home late and they had smashed a window. Wow. You know, there, there are bars on a lot of the windows. Right. But the one window in the kitchen that didn't have any bars and they got in through there. Was it a big window? They no, pretty in? small. Wow, okay. They had to squeeze through. Yeah. But, you know, they, they got my computer and my uh, video camera and some other things. Okay. And luckily, I backed up my computer that day. That's good. Yeah, except that the disc was in the computer. So they got everything. I lost two years of poetry and writings. That was really upsetting. Well, you police came and they, you know, measured people's the, the, the footprints and they, you know, tried to take some uh, fingerprints, but mm -hmm. that was the end of it. No, there was oh. no follow up. Oh, I see. Yeah. So they weren't really reliable, huh? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's hard to find people. Uh, That's true. So, but a bunch of houses in the area got robbed that day. I think Chuseok is a vital time because many people leave their homes leaves. and go to yeah. the country or something. So, it was an interesting experience. Yeah, and I'm glad you're safe now. Yeah, me too. Welcome back, everyone. Did you enjoy today's actual talk between Peter and Rachel? I sure hope you did. Now, first of all, Rachel said that she never really, luckily, encountered anything with robbery. But what did Peter say? There was a time in Korea where someone broke into his house and stole his stuff, took his valuables. But luckily, he was not home, so he was not hurt when he could have been hurt. Okay, let's take a look at the conversation line by line then. First of all, Rachel asks Peter, Peter, lately there's been a surge in theft at jewelry stores and cell phone stores. So let's focus on surge in theft. Surge itself means a sudden increase, a sudden rise. So if you say there is a surge in something, you are saying more of it is happening suddenly. Okay, but we're talking about theft. Now, we'll take a closer look 
explicit what theft means, what robbery means, and what burglary means as well. There are slight differences between these three words, but theft basically is the act of stealing, right? Uh, now, especially if someone breaks into a place without the person's knowledge and steals things, we call it a theft. So, remember at jewelry stores and cell phone stores? I think I've seen it on um, the news, like a news clip about these teenagers, how they broke into a cell phone store and they stole all the cell phones. Do you remember? So I think that's what she is talking about. And then Peter says, really, those must be professional thieves. Now, the those here means basically the people that actually went to steal things, okay, the people. But he says they must be, or those must be professional, we all know they're experts, thieves. Now, theft and thieves, they go together. Now, thieves is a plural form of thief, which is the person that steals. A thief is usually involved in theft. But we're talking about more than one person, so pluralize it, it's thieves, thieves. Now, Rachel says they don't look like, prof they don't look professional because they, meaning, the stores have CCTV. Of course, CCTV, we are more uh, commonly known with CCTV, also called surveillance cameras, right? Surveil, surveil, itself means to keep an eye on something, look closely at people or even groups of people, so keep an eye on them, and we call them CCTVs or surveillance cameras. So these stores have CCTVs, and of course, she says, they look like regular laymen. They meaning the people that broke into the cell phone store and the jewelry store, but she says regular laymen. Well, laymen, this term actually, L-A-Y-M-E-N, that's a plural form of layman, M-A-N, so we're talking about more than one person, but if you say laymen, we're talking about non-professionals. So perhaps I think Rachel meant people, okay? They're not even disguised. People that are not professional, just basically regular people, okay? Now, they're not even in disguise, okay? Disguise basically means to conceal one's identity, and to be in disguise means to conceal one's identity by perhaps wearing a mask, or wearing a hat, or a costume. So, yes, I remember. These kids, they were wearing, they were wearing masks, right? So they were in disguise. They were in disguise. Now, she explains what they did. They just run in, okay, grab everything, and come out. So this is exactly what they did. They broke into the store. They ran in, they grabbed everything, and left the store, I meaning they came out. But thankfully, now she says, I've never had to encounter anything with robbery. So what she means here, encounter means what? To meet by chance. But in this case, she is talking about experience, okay? So she's saying, thankfully, I've never had to experience anything with robbery. Now, robbery is also the act of stealing, okay? Usually a robbery is when people break into perhaps your house, like a house, and um, they, they steal things, but they may even be very, very violent. So that is called a robbery. So uh, Peter says, so you never had to call 911 or anything? Of course, in Korea, it's 119. So he says, you never had to call for help? You never had to call 11 Nine. And she says, luckily, fortunately, I've never had to call 911. And then she says, it sounds like you have, though, right? So what did Peter say? Sure. Many years ago, he says he did have to call for help. He says, my house was robbed in Korea. So once again, we're talking about robbery, and a place can be robbed, or a person can be robbed. Once again, this is when somebody steals something from you in your presence, okay? So he says, on Chuseok of all days. Of all the many days, I don't know why it had to be on Chuseok. That is what it means. So he's saying, on Chuseok, in Korea, his house was robbed. Robbers broke into his house and robbed his house. Now, she asks, were you home at the time? What did he say? He said, no. The cops said, I was really lucky that I was out, okay? Now, to be out means what? You're not at home or not at that place. And the word cop, okay, that's the plural form, C-O-P, is an informal way to call a police officer. So cops meaning police officers, they said, you were really lucky that you were not home because they, the robbers, might have hurt me if they had found me there. So he's saying there was a possibility of me getting hurt. If I had been home when the robbers broke into my house, I could have been hurt. So luckily he wasn't. And again, Peter says, but I was at the PC bunk, meaning internet cafe, emailing friends. Now, when was this? This was before people had any internet at home. So he was not home. He was at one of those internet cafes to email. And he said, and I came home late and they had smashed a window. Mm. So what is smash? Smash means to break something, but not just whoop, break it, it's smashing like glass or mirror, something that breaks, shatters. So he said, the robbers smashed a window to get in. A window in the kitchen didn't have any bars, is what he said. So I was thinking maybe he was talking about safety bars. You know how at many houses or apartments, especially on lower levels, there are bars on the window, right? Okay, so they're also called window bars or security bars for safety. And he said, they got in through there. The robbers got into the house through the kitchen window. And yes, was it a big window? Was it a big window? And he said, no, pretty small. They had to squeeze through. To squeeze through is what? Say, for example, you could squeeze an orange to make orange juice, right? So to squeeze an orange means to hold it very, very tight. Push it so tight that the juice comes out. Now, when you say squeeze through something, you are basically saying to go through a very small or narrow opening. So because the window was pretty small, the robbers had to squeeze through, okay? But they got my computer and my video camera and some other things. I lost two years of poetry and writing. That's right. So basically, he's saying the robbers took everything. A lot of things, including his computer, his video camera, and some other things. And he lost two years of something, meaning he lost poetry and writing that he worked on for two years. And did he call the police? The police came, yes, he called them, and they measured footprints. Mm -hmm. Now, they left footprints, and they tried to take some fingerprints, but that was the end of it. Now, what does this mean? Okay, so he says they measured footprints, and they took fingerprints, but that was the end of it. That was it. That was the end of the story, meaning that was all they did. There was nothing more they did. There was no follow-up. Okay, now, a follow-up basically is close to an investigation. He's saying the police, they did these things, but that was it. They did no more after that. There was no follow-up. A bunch of houses in the area got robbed that day. So he's talking about how not only his house, but many houses in his neighborhood, in the same area, got robbed as well. Now, Rachel says, I think Chuseok is a vital, okay, vital time because many people leave their homes and go to the country or something. That's true. Uh, during big holidays, especially in Korea on Chuseok, a lot of families go to the countryside together with their whole family, so many of the houses are left empty. So she's saying Chuseok is a vital. Usually when you say something is vital, you're saying that it is very, very important, or perhaps I think she meant very active. So you might even use words such as risky, uh, problematic, which also means risky or even busy, okay? So she's saying that Chuseok is a very risky or problematic or busy time. Okay, this is when a lot of robbers break into houses. And she says, but I'm glad you are safe now. So that brings us to the end of the conversation, everyone. Hope this helped you a lot. Let's take a listen to the conversation one more time, and this time, check out the subtitles. 
You know, Peter, I've been watching the news lately, yeah. and there's been a surge in theft, like at jewelry stores and cell phone stores. Really? Yeah. Those must be professional thieves. They don't look professional because they have CCTV. <laughs> oh, really? No, they just look like regular laymen. They're not even disguised. They just kind of run in, grab everything, and come out. Uh, but thankfully, I've never had to encounter anything with robbery. So you never had to call 911 or anything? You know, luckily, I've never had to call 911. Mm. Sounds like you have, though? Sure, yeah. Oh. I, uh, many years ago, my house was robbed in Korea. Oh, my goodness. On Chuseok, of all days. Were I was, you home at the time? No, uh, the cops said I was really lucky that I was out because they might have you know, hurt me if they, they found me in there. That's true. Um, but I was at the uh, PC bond, oh. <laughs> emailing friends. Okay. This was before people had the internet at home very much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I came home late and they had smashed a window. Wow. You know, there are bars on a lot of the windows. Right. But the one window in the kitchen that didn't have any bars and they got in through there. Was it a big window? They no, pretty small. Wow, okay. They had to squeeze through. Yeah. But you know, they, they got my computer and my uh, video camera and some other things. Okay. And luckily, I had backed up my computer that day. That's good. Yeah, except that the disc was in the computer. So they got everything. I lost two years of poetry and writings. That was really upsetting. Well, you called the police came. And they, you know, measured people's the, the, the footprints, and they, you know, tried to take some uh, fingerprints, but mm. that was the end of it. No, there was oh. no follow up. Oh, I see. Yeah. So they weren't really reliable, huh? Well, I don't well, know. Maybe it's hard to find people. Uh, that's true. So, but a bunch of houses in the area got robbed that day. I think Chuseok is a vital time because many people leave Everybody their homes leaves. and go to yeah. the country or something. So, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. yeah, and I'm glad you're safe now. Yeah, me too. Well, now that we've taken a listen to the actual talk one more time, let's now move on and check out some actual talk expressions. Expressions, terms, and vocabulary, and patterns, of course, you can use when talking about today's topic, which happens to be emergencies or emergency situations. Now, Rachel and Peter talked about robberies and theft, so let's focus on that as well, okay? Now, first of all, let's talk about the ways to talk about calling the police. Now, when do we call the police? Of course, when we need help in emergency situations. So you can say, I once called the police to, and then add the action, while you called, to report a hit and run. Now, a hit and run is used as one word almost. A hit and run basically means or involves motor vehicle accidents. So say, for example, a driver uh, crashes into another car or hurt somebody and he leaves the scene without even trying to call the police or report the accident. That would mean, well, a hit and run. He flees the place or she flees the scene. That's a hit and run. In Korean, I would say it's bang zoni. Okay, so hit and run, hit and run. I once called the police to report a hit and run. Another one. Last year, I called the police too. Once again, keep this pattern in mind. Keep a stalker at bay. We all know what a stalker is, right? A stalker who follows you around all the time. But keep someone or something at bay means to keep it or keep somebody at a distance. So say, for example, you have a stalker that's following you all the time. You can call the police and have them do something about it. So you can call the police to keep a stalker at bay. Keep them away from you, okay? Keep them from getting close to you. Another one, I called for help is another way of saying I called the police. I called for help when my car broke down in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we did talk about breakdown. Cars break down, things break down, which means, yeah, uh, they are in no good condition, okay? They break down. So my car broke down in the middle of nowhere. It stopped. So I called for help. Another one, I called for help when a stranger assaulted my brother. Now the word assault, okay, it is a verb and it means to physically attack someone. Okay, attack someone violently perhaps, or physically, just get into a fight, or physically attack somebody. That is an assault and you can also assault somebody, okay? Moving on to talking about robbery and burglary, okay? Let's focus on these two. There was a robbery, two houses down. There was a robbery, two houses down, meaning two houses down in the same neighborhood, okay? Moving on, there was an aggravated robbery at a convenience store. Usually when you say an aggravated robbery, you are talking about some violence being used, okay? So for example, a robbery is when a robber tries to steal something from you in your presence. You are there and if they use violence, especially when they have a weapon or they threaten you by saying, I have a weapon in here. They may show it to you or they may hide it, but if they make you think that they do have a weapon, that is called an aggravated robbery, okay? So moving on to another one, there was a hold up or stick up at a bank. I'm sure you've heard of these expressions in a lot of um, Hollywood movies. A hold up or a stick up usually involves a robbery or burglary where the offender has a weapon, okay? You're at gunpoint. So hold up, hold your arms up, right? Or stick up, stick them up. Basically means you are at gunpoint, there is a weapon, okay? Moving on, there were several burglaries in my neighborhood. Usually when you talk about burglaries, you are talking about a situation where someone breaks into a building uh, or some sort of structure, not cars. Okay, if someone breaks into your car, that would be car theft and not a burglary. Also, there was a break-in, breaking and entering next door. These are the same as burglary, okay, break-in. There was a burglary, there was a break-in, there was a breaking and entering. So these all mean the same thing, burglary, okay? Now, someone broke into my house the other day. So broke into is a past of break in or break into, okay? Moving on, ways to talk about investigations. Say for example, something happens. Someone breaks into your house or office and you call the police, they come to investigate, right? You can say the police dusted for fingerprints. You know how in, uh, I guess, uh, dramas or even in movies, the crime scene people arrive there and they dust to find fingerprints. So you can say dust for fingerprints. Also, you can take pictures, okay? And ask questions about the burglary. So this is what you can say if you want to explain a situation about an investigation. Another one, I was a victim of something. I was a victim of burglary. I was a victim of a car accident. I was a victim of a robbery. In this case, I was a victim of a purse snatching. That in Korean is what? Sumetiki. Purse snatch. Something is taken away from you. So I was asked questions about the offender's age, weight, and height. So what is an offender? An offender is the person that does something wrong. Perhaps it can be a robber or a thief or a burglar. Now this is a person that does wrongdoing. Okay, moving on to another one. I was a victim of identity theft. So I was asked about my credit card activity and bank statements. So let's focus on identity theft. I'm sure you are aware of that. Theft itself means what? The act of stealing and identity is what? Identity, I'm sure you all know. So an identity theft is when someone steals your identity. Perhaps they may use your credit card without you knowing. So you can talk about identity theft. What else? When we were robbed, the police asked us to describe, okay, the man's clothing, his age, his height and weight and hair color and other distinguishing factors. Now you can go on and talk about what they asked you in detail, but you can say distinguishing. Distinguishing meaning distinctive, very unique, okay, unique factors about that person. Okay, I was asked about the kind of car he was driving and in which direction 
he was headed. Once again, headed in this case, what does it mean? We're not talking about our head. It means headed, in which direction he was going, right? Because your head points a certain way. So if you say, I am headed home, I am headed that way, it means I am going that way, okay? Now, we can talk about some possible emergencies quickly. Power outage, you can say there was a power outage and I tried to stay away from downed power lines. Power lines, we all know this is uh, in which how electricity is transmitted. Also another one, severe weather. My family was trapped in our house. You were not able to get out of your house. You were trapped in your house because of heavy snow last winter. So you can talk about severe weather. What else? You can talk about fires. Now, do you have smoke alarms at home? I think we all do. We have to by law. We have smoke alarms installed in all sleeping areas at home, and you may test them every month. Flood, to prepare for a flood, we built an emergency kit and made a family communication plan. So quickly, now let's take a look at this. For any type of emergency, you should keep a go bag. Take a look at this. A go bag in your house, car, and at work. Uh, a lot of people like to talk about doing something or preparing for any kind of emergency, but I think we all are too lazy. A go bag is perhaps a bag with the essentials, things you need in, emer in an emergency, perhaps water, batteries, a flashlight, a first aid kit. So do you have a bag full of these things just in case there is an emergency? Now I'll leave you the definition of a go bag and also a list of things you could keep in your go bag up on our homepage, so please do check it out. And for now, that is the end of today's actual talk expressions. It's once again time for today's idiom. Are you ready for it? We did learn a lot of expressions and terms and vocab, so take a moment to kind of relax as I introduce today's idiom. It is to get away with murder. We all know what murder is, right? To kill someone. But this idiom is not scary at all. To get away with murder, I'll give you a sentence to try to figure out what it means. I used to get in trouble for the smallest things when I was young, but kids these days seem to get away with murder all the time. So think about when we were young. Yeah, we always got in trouble, even for doing the smallest thing. Uh, but then again, these days, yeah, kids tend to get away with murder very easily. The definition of this idiom, to get away with murder, is in Korean. 저지당하거나 처벌받지 않고 자기 마음대로 하는 거. 자기 하고 싶은 대로 다 하다. 단 뜻이에요. Okay, so uh, it also means even if you do something wrong, you get away with it, meaning you do not get punished for it. So to do something very bad and not get punished for it would be the definition of this idiom. Uh, here are two more examples. Joe always gets away with murder because of his sweet talking. Sweet talking, he's very sweet. Uh, another way of saying this is Joe's sweet talk is what always lets him get away with murder. So no matter what he does wrong, he's very good at sweet talking that uh, no one really finds fault in him. He gets away without getting punched. That is today's idiom, everyone. Practice it on your own and use it sometime in the future. Talk about a time when you experienced an emergency situation and had to call the police. What happened? Who was involved? How was the situation resolved? Describe the entire situation in as much detail as possible. One of the emergency situations I've had in my life involved with harassment of my best friend. Uh, my best friend and I, and I were way back home after school when we were in the second grade. And one strange, man suddenly, one strange man suddenly came to us and he told my best friend that his, her mother asked him to take her home instead of me. And But I felt in a little, little bit strange in a certain way because uh, I never saw him before. And so I chased after them as quietly as possible. And when I, when I saw them, they were going into the men's bathroom. And I was really shocked that when I saw him trying to take off her clothes. And so I quietly called the police. But at the first time, the police didn't believe me because I'm just a second grader and he thought I'm a liar. But because I was, so cr I was crying a lot, uh, he believed me. And then the police came to save the girl. And that was today's actual interview. Shin Yuan Nim comes out to for the wonderful interview. So she talked about a time when she was a lot younger, when she was in the second grade. So let's check out what she said. Now, this is what she said. And so I chased after them as quietly as possible. Chase after someone means to follow them, right? Follow someone. But she did it as quietly as possible so that she wouldn't get caught. So something happened and she chased after them. What else did she say? Because, but because I was crying a lot, he believed me. And then the police came to save the girl, meaning my friend. Now the he here, if you listen very closely to the interview, is basically the police that answered the phone because she said she called the police because her friend was in danger. So wonderful job here. Now let's move on to some oopsies as well. Okay, she said, and one strange man, okay, suddenly came up to us and he told my best friend that her mother asked him to take her home. Now, everything is perfect, but basically I would have to say it's the tense that you always have to keep an eye on. It's very, very important to keep the same tense. We're talking about something that happened in the past, right? So you should have said a strange man suddenly came up to us and he told my best friend that her mother had asked him to take her home. So not ask, but he had said that her mother asked him to take her home, okay? Uh, tense is very, very important. And also, but at the first time, take a look at this, the police didn't believe me. Why? Because I am just a second grader and he thought I am a liar. So by now you know what is wrong with the sentence, right? Now tense one more time. Now we're talking about the past, so I am, I am would be incorrect. You should take it to the past, past tense. Now, not at first time, but at first, tell me, right? At first, the police didn't believe me because I was just a second grader and he thought I was a liar, okay? Not that I am a liar, but we're talking about the past. So back then, the police thought I was lying. The police thought I was a liar. Okay, other than these are a few mistakes, job well done and everyone try not to make the same mistakes. Well, today we talked about emergencies or emergency situations where you actually had to call for help or call the police. I asked you what kinds of emergency situations you've been involved in. So think about that and try practicing talking about that very moment, who was involved and how the accident or situation was resolved. And now, as I briefly mentioned to you um, while we were doing our actual talk expressions, I did tell you that there will be more information on a go bag. So please do check our homepage. Come and check our script. On the script, you'll find information, a list of things you should keep in a go bag just in case an emergency uh, happens. And also there's going to be a checklist of supplies for emergencies, things you should keep at home in a safe place, an accessible place, easy to locate place. And also there's more detailed explanation of the difference between robbery and burglary and the difference types of robberies and burglaries. So please do check it out. Next time, our topic is your bucket list. So do you have a bucket list? Think about that. In the meantime, come to our homepage at www.ebse.co.kr. And for now, that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.